Hi everybody, we're working on chapter 4. We're going to do chapter 4 over two days. This is going to be notes for day 1. So let's look at when you are using graphs to relate two quantities. And those two quantities are called your variables. You always have an independent and a dependent variable. So let's take a look at this graph here. It shows a board, uh, board's length over time. So I want you to kind of look at it and try to determine what is happening in the graph. Look at some of the questions. The length of the board increases, decreases with time. The length of the board is constant or decreasing while you are actually cutting the board. During the time shown on the graph, there are three or four cuts. There is or is not a piece of the board left at the end of the time shown. Well, let's see. The length of the board is going down, so it is decreasing with time. The length of the board is decreasing, we just determined that. Constant would mean that there is no change. During the time shown on the graph, there are, let's see, one cut here, two cuts here, three cuts there. Because every time it goes down, that means the board decreased in length, which means it was cut. So there are three cuts. And there is a piece of the board left at the end of the time shown because it doesn't go down to zero, which means there is still some board left. So the relationship between the variables is as the time increases, the length of the board decreases. And you have two different types of variable. You have your dependent variable and you have your independent variable. Your independent variable is, is not going to change. Time doesn't change depending on the board's length. Time stays consistent. The length of the board changes depending on time. That's why it's called the dependent variable. So your y Notice this is the y-axis, is always your dependent variable, and your x is always your independent variable. Let's look at linear and nonlinear functions. So a linear function is one who is a straight line. It's either going to be um, slanted or it's going to be horizontal, but it is never going to be vertical, because if it's vertical, it's not a function. So any non-vertical line is a linear function. A nonlinear function is one that is not vertical. So notice this one has a curve, this one has a curve here, this is a V. These are all examples of nonlinear functions. But take a second and see if you can determine which ones of these down here are linear and nonlinear. Okay, so if you said this one was linear, you were correct. The second one was nonlinear, third one is nonlinear, and the fourth one is linear. All right, so when you write a rule to describe a function, a rule is an equation. And basically what you want to do is you want to make a, y, a x, y chart, like a t chart. So I'm going to look at this one here that I have here, um, these ordered pairs, and I'm going to put them into an x, y chart. So I have 0, negative 1, 1, 1, 2, 3, 3, 5, and 4, 7. And I'm going to look for a relationship between my x and my y. And to determine if it's linear, it has to have a constant difference. So I would have to have the same difference here. So from 0 to 1, you're adding 1. From 1 to 2, you're adding 1. From 2 to 3, you're adding 1. From 3 to 4, you are adding 1. And then I would have to also have a constant difference from here to here. Let's see. Here I'm adding 2. Here I'm also adding 2. Here I'm also adding 2, and here I'm also adding 2. So this is number 1, linear. If it was not constant like that, it would not be linear. It would be nonlinear. So now that I know it's linear, I can make my equation. It's always going to be y equals. And then I'm going to put the change in the y, which is 2, over the change in the x, which is 1, x plus something. I don't know what's going to go in that blank. So I have to determine what's going to go in that blank. Well, let's see. If I plug in a number like 0, I have y equals 2 times 0 plus something. Well, I know what y equals. y should be negative 1 because if you notice here, 0, negative 1. x is 0, y is negative 1. So let's plug that in. Negative 1 equals 2 times 0, which is 0, plus blank. 0 plus blank is negative 1. What is the blank? The blank is negative 1. So my equation is y equals 2x minus 1.
Notice how also has a zero in front of it, which means it's going to be, um, my, my missing number is always going to be the one with a zero for its x. Now, if it's nonlinear, you have to do something a little bit different to find the function rule. If it's nonlinear, you're going to do the same thing. Check and see if there is a constant difference. So here I have plus 1, plus 1, plus 1, plus 1. But now here I have plus 7. From here to here I have oops, plus 19. From here to here I have... 37. Hope I'm doing my math right here. And from here to here, I have 61. So then, what we're going to do, since this is not linear, because these are not the same over here, is we're going to do it again. From 7 to 19, I have plus 12. From 19 to 37, I have, let's see, plus 18. From 37 to 61, I have plus 24. So still I don't have a pattern, so let's keep going. Plus 6, plus 6. So now I've found my pattern, and it took me one, two, three tries to get to that pattern, which means that it's going to be cubic because it took me three times. And three times is an exponent of three. So I start with y equals x cubed, and then I plug in and I see what works. Well, let's see, if I plug in one for x, because I have to determine what there's gonna be here or if there's gonna be anything in front of the x. So let's see, if I plug in one for x, I have one cubed, I know the y should be 1. Well, 1 cubed is 1. So I already have my answer. Let's make sure it works with the second one. If I plug in 2 for x, 2 cubed is 8. So I know that it works because look at the 8. I mean, look at the y. It's 8. So therefore, I know that in my pattern is just y equals x cubed. I'm going to move this so that you can see it, if I can move it. Well, in any case, it just tells you that the further you go, that's going to tell you what exponent it is. So since I went out three times, it is an exponent of three. All right, so here are some words that you should already kind of know, words that suggest addition, subtraction, multiplication, division. They're kind of like keywords, and you're going to use these keywords to be able to decipher sentences and make your function rule. So if you look at the first one, it says 8 less than 1 third of x is y. Well, 8 less than, which is a word that su suggests subtraction, but less than happens to be a special word because it means that it's less than the next number. So I have to subtract 8 from that number. So it's going to be minus 8. One third of x, so one third, and of means multiplication, is, which means equals, y. So less than is a special case. Uh, fewer than is a sub special case, more than is a special case. Anytime you see those words, you know that you're going to have to flip it because you're taking it away or you're adding it to the second number. Okay? Try doing the next problem and see how you do with it. 12 more than the quotient of a number t and 7 is v. Okay, so we have a more than, which is our special case. So we know it's a plus but the 12 is going to be second. So 12 more than the quotient of a number t and 7. Well, quotient I know is division. So the t is written first, so it goes on top. So 12 more than the quotient of a number t and 7 is equals v. If you got that, then you did it right. 
Take a second, try the next one. The price P of a large cheese pizza is $7.95. So P is equals $7.95 plus .75 for each topping T on the pizza. Well, we know that um, we're talking about with the prices per topping. So that means that it is going to be multiplication. Look at the next one, it's a little interesting. Eric is two years younger than two times his sister's age. So he is two years younger. This is not one of your key words, but you know that if it's younger, you're gonna be subtracting. Then, but it has the then, younger than, which indicates that it's gonna come second. Two times his sister's age, write a rule that represents Eric's age, A, as a function of his sister's age, S. So two times his sister's age, S, and that is Eric's age, A. How old is Eric if his sister is 11? Then you just plug in the 11 for S. Try doing this problem here. Okay, so we end up with this for your equation, and when you plug in the 15, that is what you get for your fee. All right, let's look at these problems here. I want you to take a second, pause the video, and go ahead and do the problems on this page and see how you do with them. Make sure you read the directions, see what it's actually asking for, and let's see if you understood the lesson. Okay, here are the answers. Go ahead and check your answers. Number one is up here, and number two is down here in red. Number three is here in the blue. Number four is here, and number five is in the green.